wa mwaka 2022 ni mkutano ambao unaendelea kwa sasa mtazamaji hivyo basi naomba tuleke kule moja kwa moja na tuwasikize ambapo narifa kwamba mwenyekiti sasa wa Fulo Chebukati anazungumza tuwasikize areas of how the commission should run activities uh, recently uh, for the mti and uh, dr abdallah you participated in giving giving us four commissioners uh, that is now sorting out the internal issues so that we are now fully constituted so internally the commission has done all it could including coming up with strategic plans election operation plans and we are technically ready for the upcoming elections our problems are now they remain they remain external problems which we have and which a number of them are yet to be addressed by our external stakeholders the first one is a late enactment of electoral laws the international best practice is that election amendments to election law must be 2 years before uh, a general election on our part as a commission uh, we have engaged parliament and uh, for example we drafted a few bills following meetings with the parliamentary committee uh, the draft referendum bill was drafted and taken to parliament um, and I note it's on the floor of the house. We hope it will be concluded. The AIBC amendment bill, which deals with boundary limitation, was submitted to parliament on 20th May 2020. Uh, we haven't heard anything about it. The election campaign finance amendment bill 2020 was submitted on 21st August 2020. We yet to hear anything. And then the commission also prepared a general report on proposed electoral reforms in Kenya, the IBC experience, which we submitted to both houses of parliament on 19th October 2020. And uh, we're still hoping to get feedback uh, from the relevant uh, uh, relevant uh, committees of parliament now in this report we drew everything from the 2017 experiences identified areas of legal reform which we hope will enrich the commission and also assist the country to prepare towards free fair and credible elections this report is available on our website uh, you may wish to interact with it. And on this note, I want to agree with the religious uh, groups and uh, which came up recently to say that legal reforms must be completed at least by December this year. If we have amendments to the law late in the day, it will affect our election operation plan. So any amendments that complement our election operation plan, I want to join hands with the, the, I think it was the Catholics, who said must be done by December this year, if they complement our election operation plan. But if we have amendments that are going to change the course of our election operation plan, then as a country, we should defer them until after the general election. Because to change the course of our election operation plan, is to prepare for, for failure. Another area of challenge uh, is, uh, of course, uh, numerous court cases that are filed uh, to influence the commission decisions and operations. Of course, Kenyans have a right to go to court, but as a commission, we are alive to this fact that uh, pronouncements on uh, court decisions uh, pronouncements are made too close to elections, therefore thereby affecting the Commission's uh, preparedness. So this then is an area we're alive to. We also are alive to the fact that the Commission is constantly under political interference. This then erodes the Commission's independence. If the Constitution is very clear, Article 88, as well as Article 249, 
2B of the Constitution, which demands that electoral management bodies are free from influence of political parties and candidates. So as we do our politics, we should refrain from attacking uh, the, the Commission. Despite these clear provisions, politi politicians and political parties always try to undermine the independence of the Commission during the elections and engage in false accusations of the Commission and its staff, thereby bending and damaging the image of the Commission well before elections are held. This is met to us by another challenge, which is ethnicized and divisive politics, which make it highly charged and exposes staff and commissioners to ethnic profiling, making them insecure and susceptible to attacks. One of the challenges, uh, again, which I must speak about, is the issue of uh, inadequate and untimely disbursement of funding to the Commission. Over the years, the Commission's funding has not been adequate and in tandem with the electoral cycle. If you look at uh, where we come from the last three years, we've been asking for funds to prepare for elections. And the first response we got was this financial year, where we, our budget is 40.9 billion shillings, and yet the allocation we have been given is 26.5 billion. So as a commission, we are then exposed to the risk of underfunding. And again, the fact that we got the first tranche of funding this financial year puts us again in, a, in that last minute rush to start procurement. And uh, this then constrains our activities in the electoral cycle. So other than uh, this delayed funding causing us to rush to do procurement of goods and services at inflated costs, the vendors also now then take advantage of this commission's urgency to catch up with the electoral cycle. And the, the, the combined effort of all, effect of all this is to negatively impact then the, the work of the, uh, the commission. But despite all this, the Commission is committed to ensuring that we procure everything in time for elections. Another issue that I've heard from the religious community and as well as the other stakeholders is why are our elections so expensive? Uh, this is a challenge for all of us. And the simple answer is that we have a legislation that guides our election process. I'll just pick one example. The law says you cannot have more than 700 voters per polling station. We are now targeting to register is it six or seven million. Seven million. That will mean we shall increase our polling stations from the 40,883 we had in 2017 and to project it to be about 53,000 plus. Meaning the, we shall employ more people, so our wage bill will go up. If you look at our budget, our wage bill is about 6 billion for the temporary staff. Now you cannot change that because the number of polling stations must be as by the law. We must deploy technology. It's again another cost driver. Our ballot papers are very, very complex. They have security features more than even the currency you have in your pocket. And that must be done because of the, the trust deficit issues we have around the elections in the country. So with all these challenges, then what do we do? What, what then do we have? What recommendations do we have? And this is a conversation we must have all of us as a country, starting from this room. The Commission has a plan, the election operation plan. That's our plan to deliver the next elections. It's a very good plan. And uh, 
it gives clarity on the activities we have. We are very confident with, with that plan that we shall deliver the next general elections. But there must be sufficient budget support and timely exchequer releases for us to do so. Delaying budget support will interfere the electoral calendar activities and therefore the electoral management. Electoral management requires continuous and stable resourcing, not on the spot and, uh, funding, but it needs cumulative and cascading expenditure exercises. However, IBC's experience, which we have gone through, has been due to budget cuts and delay of exchequer releases from the National Treasury. And it, it, it's, uh, it's what we have talked about. This conversation must take place. We are still engaging the National Treasury, and we hope that uh, this will be resolved in good time. I also hope that uh, Parliament and the relevant parliamentary committees will at least cut out the, make arrangements to, with the Commission to cut out minimum reforms that will not affect the election operation plan and hopefully this should be done by December latest uh, this year. Another area that we must look at is that Yes, the IBC is independent, and we have cited Article 8.8. Uh, our independence is very clear in the Constitution. But we must work with other institutions to, for us to deliver. Um. Bila shaka mtazamaji huwa poni mjadala kuhusiana na uchaguzi mkuu wa maka ujao pale ikiwa ni tume ya uchaguzi na mipaka IBC inakutana na viongozi mbalimbali mbali kutoka mashirika ya kidini kuzungumzia swala hili la uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka 2022 pale basi naizungumza sasa hivi